And um, birdsong is a very good subject for doing on Zoom. Lots of people have sent in things they'd like us to play. So I'm really pleased about that. Um, I'm going to try and include almost everything you've asked for. One of the um, one of the first things that I was asked actually was why do birds sing? Um, and also which birds are singing? Is it males and females or, or just males? So why do they sing? Well, the reason for singing, there are really just two reasons. One is to defend the territory, set up an area that's theirs and theirs alone. And therefore it's, it's the male that does that job. Secondly, the male's also looking for a female because in quite a lot of small birds, they change partners every year. Large birds, they're usually partners for life, but on smaller birds, because they don't live very long, they just kind of, well, grab hold of whoever they can because they have to. And, uh, and also they don't live very long. So it's quite a chance their partner may have died in, in the last year. So basically defending territories, setting up an area, keeping other males out and getting females in. So it's the males that do the singing. The one bird in Britain that does show the female singing occasionally is the robin. And that happens during the winter months when robins go through a sort of separation process and males and females live in different parts of, of the same sort of woods. But if you travel around the world and hear lots of bird song, it's not true that it's always the male. On a lot of birds in tropical countries, they actually do duetting where one starts the call, the other one finishes it. Uh, and, and, and they're quite complex. So it's really not quite as simple as it is just here. So birds sing a lot at the beginning of the day and quite a bit towards the end of the day. Now the dawn chorus in the middle of June would be probably about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. It's a lovely sound. It's actually worth getting up to listen to. And that really is um, because they sing like crazy then and really loud. And that's because they actually can't effectively feed at that point. It's not light enough. So they might as well use the time to re-establish their territory. And then having done that, when it then gets a bit lighter, they start eating and, and finding food. So you'll notice there's quite a dive in the amount of song around about seven o'clock. It goes much, much quieter. And then it goes up a bit at sort of mid-morning, quieter during the day. And at the end of the day, as they're finishing off, then it, then it starts again. So yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's what Dawn Chorus is about. Learning bird song is important because very often birds will not be visible and knowing their sounds is the only way you're gonna be able to detect that they're actually nearby. Things like bullfinches, you know, I very rarely see a bullfinch before I hear it, it's usually the other way around. Um, and, you know, if you're on the coast, if you're listening for looking in one direction, you know, waders like oyster catchers or something calling loudly, you know, will attract you to, to where they are flying past at a time. There are some species we're gonna to see today that actually look the same, but sound different. Chiff Chaff and Willow Warbler are a good example of that. I know people are quite keen to hear things like Goldcrest and Firecrest too, but unfortunately when we did this the last time, what we did find is that high frequency sounds just don't transmit unless you've got a special, um, special setup for doing that. So I won't try high pitch ones tonight, um, but uh, you can listen to them online. Right, okay, let's get, let's get started. And Barry, if you could put the next slide on, please. And that's what I've just been talking about. What's it all about? Well, it's all about, it's all about territory. Right, next slide, please. Okay, now one of the questions people asked is what is the best way to learn birdsong? And are there good apps? Yes, this is the Collins Bird Guide. You've probably all got the hardback um, copy or the softback one as a book, but I've got it on my phone and it's a really terrific app. You can just open it up on your phone. Uh, and I'm going to be looking down at it quite a lot because I'm going to be driving the whole presentation from that. Um, so I'm just going to hold that up. I probably won't show with it because we've got that uh, background. But anyway, it, it has um, all the species in. So everything I want, I can find. And it's about 15 pounds. It's got maps, it's got all those illustrations, and it's got sounds, so terrific. And you can play it on your phone. All I would say is that if you're near the bird, don't play it to the bird because it'll go nuts. It's not really fair on the bird if it's nesting, but you can just quietly play it to yourself so you can hear that and you can do a direct comparison. Okay, so let's get on to the first birds, please, Barry. And um, I'm gonna start with just two or three really common ones. So. 
So Blackbird is a really rich sound. I, I love the sound of the Blackbird. They've just started in the last couple of uh, weeks around where I live. So for me, if you could turn chocolate into a bird song, that would be it. That lovely, rich, deep sound. And each time that the blackbird sings, it sings a different phrase. I mean, it may well have favorite phrases it'll do every few minutes, but it doesn't repeat itself over and over again. Just a little bit more. Okay, so the one we want to compare that with is the song thrush. Now, song thrush is really quite different. And the thing to remember about the song thrush is that whereas the blackbird did uh, a new phrase each time it sang, song thrushes repeat the same phrase over and over again. And they might just get a sound and do it uh, three times, stop for a bit, then do another sound, do it three times, and so on. So blackbirds don't do that. So here's the song thrush. So I hope you could see there the way that that song thrush was really going to town on on taking each phrase and doing it two or three times. Uh, it's really distinctive. And, and once you know to listen for that, it's, it's something you really pick up on a lot. So next one, please, Barry. And this is the mizzle thrush, a bigger bird known actually as the stormcock because it's one that will very often sing from the tops of trees in the worst weather when all the other birds are hiding and keeping down low when the wind is blowing. Mizzle thrush is very often singing. It's a very strident sound, doesn't really vary its pitch very much. So if you're musical in any way at all, you'll notice that there's really not much modulation here at all. It's all at about the same level. dull sound. I, I find it rather monotonous and, you know, not, not as attractive as the other two. So I hope those were clear. Um, next one, please. So uh, a few people asked about the wren. I think probably the wren has got the most powerful voice of any bird, given its size. It, it really is a loud, fast trilling. The wren. Right, what's next, Barry? Great tit. Now, when we come to tits here, I'm going to just give you some of the comparisons. I'm not going to do all of the birds because there are too many of them. Great tits are a bit annoying. They have something like, um, I'm forgetting now, I think it's 70 different sounds that they make, and you're never going to learn all 70, uh, and not all of them do all 70, so they each might have about 10. Um, but generally speaking, think of a saw cutting wood, and that's going to be your great tit. So have a listen. They also have a number of other sounds, but they always seem to go backwards and forwards. That's the, that's the main thing about it. And the other thing about this is that the Great Tits song is at the kind of level where if you wanted to do your own version of that by whistling, you could get the same pitch. But the coal tit, which is the next one, um, is actually much higher. It's the same sort of um, sound, you know, it's going backwards and forwards, but it's much faster and much more high pitched.
So as you can see, great tip and cold tip, kind of the same thing, but very different if you are at all musical. One is just very flat, sort of seesaw, seesaw. The other one's much more bouncy. Okay, Barry, next one, please. Um, so these are two birds that look absolutely identical and they cause so many problems for birders. Marsh tit and willow tit. Now, both of them are declining. The marsh tit is still reasonably common. You'll, it's the one you'll see in the new forest, for example, coming down to seed and things like that near Isle of Pond. Um, it, the willow tit is only now found in about three or four woods in the whole of Hampshire and all up in the north. If you're looking at the marsh tit, two things to note about it. It's got a shiny cap, which you can just see in this photograph. And also, if you get a chance to photograph it, at the base of the beak, just where the beak joins the, the, the feathers, there is always a, a little tiny white mark on the beak, whereas on the, the willow tit there isn't. So um, the main thing to know about marsh tit is their, their call, which I'm going to play now, which is a sort of, sort of pitchu sound. Now there are lots of tit sounds that sound like that. So you, you've got to be a bit careful with just relying on that. But marsh tit song has two types. A little bit like a great tit, but it's got a bit more of a spring in it. And also this. about marsh tit is that they nearly always will make that pitchy call which which I played first of all just a reminder now willow tit which was the next slide um, to look at it I mean it really is a very similar looking bird um, it is a bit browner much warmer color on the breast a bit whiter around the face the white the sort of the black the white and then the brown really look like uh, well, it looks like a, a, an Oreo biscuit, really. Um, but on a marsh tit, it doesn't look quite like that. There's no white on the beak, and uh, those are very hard to tell. Now, um, the call, frustratingly, is very much like the marsh tit. Here is the call. <laughs> but what it does do is it does a sort of Chi chi na na like that. And it's the na na sound which is the key thing. But what you really want to hear is the song. And I actually now never ever tick off on my list a willow tip unless I hear it sing. And here's the song. So uh, that's really the sort of descending sound. Um, and the really frustrating thing at the moment for all of us is that it seems that marsh tits are starting to make calls like willow tits. So as the willow tits move away and basically they're advancing north with climate change, they're much commoner now up in the Midlands than they ever were before. Um, marsh tits are sort of taking over and they're also doing willow tit type songs. It's quite frustrating and we don't quite know where we are sometimes, but I think sadly we're going to be losing willow tits within the next two or three years. Okay, next one, please, Barry. Um, right, on to some finches. And uh, chaffinch is the one I always describe as sounding a bit like a bowler in a, in a cricket match, running up the crease with the ball and bowling it. So you get kind of thud, thud, thud as it's, the bowler's running along and the sort of big spring as the bowl, ball is thrown um, and a big bang at the end as the batsman hits it. It's the way I see it anyway. Let's see if I can find the right song. Here we go. Well, that is a description that works for me. You have to come up with your own ones, but uh, it's an explosive sound. Um, yeah, I know you're getting odd words on the bottom of the screen. I've just seen somebody ask about that. I don't know why that's happening. We will find out before the Hoss AGM. Next one, please, Barry. Um, so the next one is the green finch, and the green finch is a lovely sound actually, it's a twittering sound, here's the song. Mm. 
Ah, oh, it just was about to make the call I'm going to play now. It does a, a lovely uh, wheezy sound. On Twitter. Quite a variety of sounds, but the good thing about green finch is it nearly always a bird, is a bird you can see when it's, when it's making these sounds. Right, so the next one, please, uh, Larry, is goldfinch. Um, goldfinch is a lovely sort of jingling sound, really happy, um, beautiful sound, and uh, one you're hearing a, a lot at the moment, actually. So that's the goldfinch. So it's a sort of jangly sound, um, really happy, and, and they do a lot of that uh, right at this time of the year. Um, I think next one's bullfinch. Um, bullfinch, as I said, is a bird you really want to know the sound of because you really hear this bird before you see it. So I'm going to play you first of all the call, which is the one you normally will hear. They don't sing very often, but here's the call. So there's the um, there's the Bill Finch call, um, and the song is much longer. So I'll just play you that. So that's the the sound. So it's basically a bit like somebody whistling, um, but if you know that sound, it really does help you. Right, next one, please, Barry. We're going to get into the warblers and um, we've got now a couple that basically um, are well this one's arriving already chiff chaff some of them have been here all winter anyway and the chiff chaff is um with the willow warbler a bird that looks so similar if we just quickly look at willow warbler which is the next slide i mean to look at them willow warblers basically a bit more green uh, a longer winged bird because it, it actually migrates all the way to southern africa um and it's got pale legs. If you go back to the chiff chaff, if you're able to do that, uh, you're going to have to go, there we go. Um, it's got dark legs and it's also got shorter wings because it doesn't migrate as far. Right, chiff chaff. Good thing about that is it actually sings its own name. And here it is. Chiff chaff, um, pretty easy, I think that one. Um, that's pretty much all they do. Now, willow warbler is a bird that um, let me just type it in. Um, has a beautiful cadence going down the scale. That hasn't arrived yet. Willow warblers usually the last week of March, but once we get into April, they'll be here. Sadly, declining again. It's another bird that's affected by climate change. They're really common in Scotland now, and not so common here. Um, somebody was asking. Is there a good area in the new forest? I think there's quite a few around acres down, but it's a bird that's declined. Anyway, here's the beautiful descending song. So it quite often we'll go further than that. It comes all the way down uh, and um, I'll just do it once more. So I'm seeing people commenting that they're not necessarily hearing all the sounds I'm playing, and I don't know why that is. Um, but basically it says, people are saying after five seconds, the sound's cutting out. I don't know why that is, I'm afraid. We'll have to research that. A um, couple of quick things to listen to here, and that is that Chiff Chaff and Willow Warbler have almost identical calls. I'm just going to play you the call of the Willow Warbler, first of all. They both kind of go like that. Um, the willow warbler is very much like two syllables. It's like a hooweet. Here's the willow warbler. So if you were drawing that, it would definitely be like that. Um, but the chiff chaff is different. Chiff chaff is much more, much shorter sound. Um, right, someone's pointing out some suggestions on this uh, noise. I'd like to find out what that's all about. But here we go with the chiff chaff. Thank you. 
so it's more going up rather than rather than um, just like that. Okay, right. Um, well, I do hope this is all working for you because it's frustrating for me if it doesn't work. I'm going to play you another warbler, so we can move on now, please, to Black Cat, which is the next slide. Um, right. Uh, I've got even people not seeing slides. Gosh, we're having fun tonight. Black Cat and Garden Warbler, two warblers that actually sound the same, but look completely different. So here's the Black Cat. I think we all know it. This is the male with the Black Cat. Um, and the Garden Warbler, if we just move on to the next slide, um, Barry, to show that. Completely brown bird, stays really low, uh, not a bird that sits up high usually, whereas black cat's very showy. So just go back one slide, I will now play you the, the black cat song. Now the thing about this is it does hit the high notes. It, the thing that is different to the garden warbler is garden warbler doesn't hit the high notes. It, it's not a soprano, it's an alto. So here is um, here's the black cat. I'm gonna hold this up. Right, so that is the black cat. Um, I'm now going to put the garden warbler on and hopefully you will see the difference. It's a much, um, a much more rapid song. It sounds like the birds are in a, a great hurry to finish this song. Um, sometimes we'll sing for really ages without appearing to take breath. But notice it doesn't do the high notes. That's only the black cat that does those. Here we go. So I hope you could see there that that's a much deeper sound, it doesn't hit the high notes. Uh, and very often when you hear them, they will go on and on and on. And you very rarely see them, whereas black cap's usually out on a branch showing itself really well. So a couple more uh, of our warblers, and um, these, these haven't arrived yet. Um, common white throat is the common one we get in hedgerows on farmland. It's got a, scratch, a scratchy song like this, There's the, uh, there's the common white throat. So I can't really describe that other than being scratchy. It's the scratchiest of all the songs that I know. Um, the next one is the lesser white throat, which is um, a much rarer bird. I probably only hear this two or three times a year in the summer. It doesn't sing for very long. It arrives in May, maybe end of April, sings for about three or four weeks. Um, and if it finds a female, it will go quiet. So it's a bit of luck involved here. I think it's quite often a bit like, um, a little bit like a chaffinch in some respects, but here it is. I'm trying everything I can do here to get this sound right, and I've got people saying try it near the, near the microphone, so here we go. So that's the lesser white throat. So that, that rattly song is the thing to listen for and um, very different from the, from the common white throat. Right, a couple more warblers, um, or three more warblers actually. So the Dartford warbler, which is a bird of our, of our heathlands, one that you're not going to see out and about generally unless you go to say New Forest or some of the heaths up around the Thames Basin and so on. Um, quite a scratchy, quite a scratchy sound again. Here it is. The way I would describe that is being a bit like a, uh, a bird singing that's got a couple of ball bearings stuck in its throat. It's got this kind of rattly sound. You can almost hear uh, sounds like ball bearings all rubbing together. Right, we've got a couple more warblers now. Um, 
two more. So Dar Darford, of course, is a, a bird that lives with us all year. Sedge warbler is arriving next month um, and is the commoner one really in, in most widespread habitat. So it will go into bushy areas on the edges of lakes and so on. Um, but the one to compare it with is the reed warbler. Quickly look at the reed warbler if we make these, um, Barry. Um, apparently we need to turn off, according to people, we need to turn off noise reduction. Um, I have no idea where that is, but Barry, you may be able to find it uh, before we finish. Uh, apologies to everyone for this. It, uh, it worked last time, so I'm sorry it's not working so well this time. So reed warbler, very looking, very different looking bird to the sedge warbler. Sedge warbler's got a big eyebrow. Reed warbler, pretty plain and almost like a garden warbler to look at. Very, very plain. But um, if we just go back to sedge warbler, um, they both have similar sort of songs. Um, this one's a bit more sparrow-like, I suppose, for me. Right, I'm just looking at this um, this sound suppression thing. I've got a, it's on auto, which someone suggested. Uh, I've got the option of low, medium, or high. So we're going. I'm going to go for high. Oh, no! Put it on low. Put it on low. It's now on low. Let's see if this uh, solves it. Um, thankfully, in my career, I used to do live TV, so this is actually uh, a bit of a reminder of my old life. Right, um, so that's the sedge wall. I think it's quite sort of sparrow-like in many ways. The um, reed warbler, though, next one, please. Think to listen to this. It's got a real rhythm to it. So I can almost imagine this bird in the reed bed jumping up and down because it's got this kind of rhythm to it. So um, I don't know if you can see what I'm getting at there, but have a listen to this. So I don't know if you could pick up there, that sort of bouncy thing. Someone's asked for the sedge warbler again. Um, so we'll just do that once more. Here's the sedge warbler. So if you see what I mean about it being a bit sort of sparrow-like, it's a bit sort of um, scratchy. Right, next one, please, Barry. And the next one is Skylark. Now, I think probably everybody knows Skylark, but it's such a fabulous sound, I just thought I'd put it on. Um, interesting thing about Skylark is that it, it flies up from the ground, sometimes will sing on the ground or on a post, and then heads up into the sky. But whilst it's singing, it's actually breathing. So it's actually able to take air in whilst singing. So I suppose if you can imagine, you can when you whistle, you can whistle in and you can whistle out if you want to. Um, that's what it's doing. It's almost like bellows. It's keeping it all going at the same time. But here's the wonderful song. It goes on for about two minutes nonstop. <laughs> I've just been out for a walk and I was hearing that everywhere today, but a sunny day in March is a good time to, to hear the skylark. Um, so the one that it's closely related to is the woodlark. Um, different sound completely, and I think it's 
on the heaths early in the morning this is the one you'll mainly hear for example if you go to heathy areas of the new forest quite close to maybe where the woodland edge is the woodlark oh, just one second press the wrong button here we go Two for the price of one leg, so had a cuckoo going on there as well in the background. I don't know if you could hear that. So that's a, a rarish bird found on our heathlands, whereas the skylark's widespread, found across many habitats, mainly farmland, arable land, and so on. Um, the next one, please, Barry. Right, so I had a request from somebody to listen to the drumming of woodpeckers, and that's a good one to come up with because of the woodpeckers, the only ones that drum. Uh, are the um, great spotted woodpecker and the lesser spotted woodpecker. Green woodpecker actually has a loud call of its own and it doesn't need loud drumming in order to get itself known. Um, whereas in the great spotted woodpecker and the lesser spotted woodpecker, the drumming is entirely territorial. It's nothing to do with finding food. It's not making a hole. It's simply finding a nice bit of wood that will really resonate and, and making a loud drumming sound. So. First of all, great spotted woodpecker. Um, it, it is a shortish drum, it's loud. Um, and if you were imagining it uh, as, as a picture, it would be sort of like doo -doo 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 -doo, like that. Whereas lesser spotted woodpecker literally says at the same level, and it's like a like that. Now here's the great spotted woodpecker first. And that's the one you're going to be hearing in most of our woods. Just play it once more. A really common bird uh, that we're finding around everywhere, really. Such a, an adaptable species. Now, the lesser spotted woodpecker, very sadly, is declining. It's, um, I wouldn't say it's on the way out, but uh, the only place really in Hampshire where you see a lot of them or see them regularly is the new forest. And we probably have, oh, getting on for something like a quarter of the, uh, the country's lesser spotted woodpeckers just in the new forest. And the drumming, as I say, is more like a continuous line. Here it comes. So I suppose, really, if you could count to three with the drumming sound, you've got lesser spotted woodpecker. And if all you can do is go to one or two, then you're listening to Great Spotted. Uh, right, next one, please, Barry. Right, so the nuthatch, it's not actually a woodpecker, but, you know, it's almost like a wannabe woodpecker because it behaves just like them. Uh, and it has a, a load of sounds, but the main one it does uh, is a sort of toy, toy, toy. Now, I've got various calls I can choose. And also this song. And also this call. So quite a lot of sounds from the nut hatch there. Very visible bird, so I don't think you'd have difficulty finding that one. Uh, the next one, please. Right, okay, I had a request for owls. So um, the commonest owl in Hampshire by far, uh, and certainly in our woodland areas, is the tawny owl. And it really is the to wit to woo bird. Um, so basically there are two sounds you're gonna hear. You've got the hooting, which is mostly the male, and we're gonna play a male, but the female does the same sound, but much, much quieter and almost sounds like it's got a a sore throat, it's a strangulated sound. And the female also does a, a call, which people describe as kiwik. But I'll play you the, uh, the hooting first of all. So here's the, here's the male tawny owl.
So you've probably all heard that. It's a, it's a very, very common sound. So here's the female's kiwik call. And you've probably all heard that as well. So you can hear both sounds at the same time when you're out and about. They call a lot around October. They're a bit quieter now. And they set up their territories before the winter, uh, which, is, which is why they do a lot of calling at that time. Especially young birds that have only been born that year and want to get a territory set up. Okay, so the next one uh, is Little Owl. I uh, took this photograph on a farm near where I live. Lovely bird, but declining sadly. And if you own a farm, then please do put up some owl boxes because these birds need places to live and they've lost lots of their hollow trees, I'm afraid. Um, there are various sounds. Um, this is the one that you hear probably this time of the year from Little Owl. It's the call of the male. And they both male and female have a sort of cat-like sound, uh, which sounds like this. I don't know if you can hear that, it's got a lot of rumbling. Let's play it once again. So if you hear an owl that sounds like a cat, that's going to be a little owl. Okay, next slide, please. All right, this is another one that people were requesting, Raven. Now, Raven's really become much more common in uh, in Britain, uh, in Hampshire, actually, just in the last 10 years, we've probably got something like 80 pairs nesting now. Really easy to see in the New Forest. A deep, deep call, much deeper than the carrion crow that we're hearing. A really distinctive sound. And again, another one of these birds where you'll hear it before you see it. Once more. Really kind of deep and... Uh, Certainly looks as though it sounds like it could do with some cough mixture as well. Um, right, next one, please. Yeah, now oh, one of my favorite birds. And this particular individual, this is this is Winnie. She's the female peregrine that lives at uh, Winchester Cathedral. I'm pleased to say that she has just laid her second egg today. Um, she surprised us all by laying the first one a week early. Normally she lays them tomorrow, but she did them a week, the first one a week early and then left us until today wondering when the next one was going to arrive, because normally it's one every two days, uh, every other day. So, um, yeah, so we're not sure if she's maybe a bit under the weather and not feeling at her best. She could have low levels of calcium, which maybe is making it difficult for her to form the eggshell. We're not sure, but we'll see. Anyway, that's Winnie. Um, and peregrines, yes, three people asked. They wanted to hear peregrines, so I'm just going to find that. Really distinctive sound. Um, if you've got a, uh, if you've got somebody else's cat in your garden and you want to get rid of that, um, just just play the peregrine. Works for me. There we go. It's pretty loud, <laughs> pretty aggressive. Um, yeah, um, but if you haven't seen the peregrines on the Winchester. Cathedral webcam, just type in Winchester Peregrines and you'll find them there. Uh, we've got two cameras and there's also a camera live on uh, and, uh, St Mary's Church Andover. Just type in Andover Peregrines and you'll find those. And that has a facility so you can go back and look at what's happened in the last 12 hours as well. Right, um, I think that's the end of the birds. What I did want to say is, I know some of you are members of HOSS, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, probably most of you are, but if you're not, then our website's full of information. There are lots of talks, um, including another bird song talk, actually, rather similar to this one, which you can look at for free. Um, lots of information about birds, where to go, um, all kinds of stuff. So have a look at that, hoss.org.uk. Um, next slide, please. A uh, quick advert about HOSS. This is what you would get if you're a member. You get um, three newsletters a year called Kingfisher, and you get the annual bird report as well, which is a super bird report to have. Um, 16 pounds to join. And the next slide.
is the Hampshire Bird Atlas, which we've reduced from £35 to £25, but an offer for people to like, if we just uh, change the slide, please, Barry, to the next one. Um, that's what it looks like inside with graphs and uh, photos and whatever. Um, so it's a fantastic book, really good photographs. Next slide, please. And just basically an offer for you tonight that if you're not a member of HOSS and you'd like to join, we'd love you to join. And if you do join tonight, we'll let you have that atlas for £15 plus postage. And Brian Coates' address, we'll just leave that up there, that email address, if you'd like to do that offer, which I think works out at £35 all in, uh, then Brian would love to hear from you. 35 just includes the, um, the postage. So we'll keep that address up there. Um, Barry, I think that's the end of, well, that is the end of my talk. Um, it's pretty much the end of me, actually, I have to say. <laughs> well, hang in there, Keith. There's a, one or two more requests that have come in, if I might oh, right. uh, share them with you, put you on the yeah. spot in, in the usual way. Uh, yeah. You've covered pretty much all the birds that... Um, posted uh, in advance. Um, I know you, you 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 said right up front that those were the high pitch one, fire crest, gold crest, you were going to leave off. I think the long tail tit also in that category. Um, but um, meadow and tree pipit uh, come in as a, are you able to cover those um, with any commentary? Yeah, sure. That was a request for, for those that came in tonight. Um, okay. All right, so shall I do that one? So Please, if you would, and I'll fire one or two more at you as well, if you could right. uh, get through those. I have to say, this goes to show how, how good this app is. So I can just type it in uh, and, and get it all straight up. So Metapivot, first of all, uh, they do a parachuting song. They, they go up high, a bit like Skylark, but they, they go up and they come straight down. So this is the Metapivot. Might not hear it too well because it is rather high. Did you hear that, Barry? Yep, Maybe. I could. Keith, yep. I can you mind. Could hear that. Good. So that was the metapivot. Um, and they both do the same thing, actually. But the tree pivot is a bit less inclined to uh, to, to do that uh, song flight. It, it does do it, but it, it, it's a bit more, um, quite often will do it from the ground as well. So here's the tree pivot. And that's only a summer migrant. They won't have arrived yet, just yet. So I guess I'd describe that as being a rather flamboyant medical bit. It's got a lot more um, a lot more musical sounds in it, whereas the medical bit is basically a bird at the same pitch going sort of gee, 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 and then sailing down. Um, if you think that tree pipits always sit, sit in trees, they don't, and medical bits don't always sit in meadows. So the song helps. Saw so somebody said Siskin. Um, yeah, which a few, few requests for Siskins, Keith, if you can. Yeah, sure. Not an easy one to hear. Uh, it's a bit of a jumbled up sound. So they've got a call that you hear quite a lot, which I'll play you here. <laughs> Hope you can hear that. So that's a sort of pew pew sound. Now the song, a bit of a jingling twitter, a bit like the goldfinch. It's pretty quiet. That's a that's a sound you don't hear very loud. But that pew pew as they fly over is pretty distinctive. What what else are we wanting? Uh, I'll do a couple more, and then a more general question in a second, Keith. Um, actually, red kites. I know we've covered that in a, in a other talk. Red but kite. talks, but yeah. um... so red kite um, is a is a wonderful sound. It's a sort of whistling wee -oo, wee -oo, wee. -oo. Much more interesting than the buzzard. Here we are. <laughs> again okay could you hear that okay yeah back of my end i heard um, someone saw someone said duck this is a bit like family favorites this isn't it yeah uh, here we go right so, uh, duck it's rather a high-pitched sound so i don't know if it's going to work but here it goes
hearing that okay? Yeah, coming through my end, Keith. Good, good. Yeah, it's a rather quiet sound, Donna. Doesn't doesn't um, it's not a not a showman. Really quiet. Quite often at the bottom of the bush as well. Okay. Some of us are too young to remember family favourites. Good point, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll move swiftly on. Um, stock dove. Let me throw that one out. Yeah, stock dove. Stock dove. I think that's a real budget. moaning bird. Uh, it's a good example of where you need to hear, know your sound. So here it is. Does that come through okay? It's a kind of moaning sound that starts yeah. and works its way down. Let's do it again. Okay, uh, I'm actually going to quickly, quick divergence, Keith, a uh, more general question. There was one and perhaps um, might have been easier for you earlier on, but the distinction between a call and a song. Is there a distinction between a call and a song? Yeah, uh, so a song really is the territorial sound that the bird is, the male bird is doing in order to defend the territory or attract a mate. Um, and a call is basically between two birds or a bird maybe giving an alarm. Um, that's basically how we describe them. But of course, you get some birds like, for example, peregrine. We could hardly describe peregrine as singing, could you? So um, in those situations, uh, larger birds don't really have quite the same need to sing as smaller birds. I mean, some do, things like curlews and so on, and some of the wading birds. Uh, so call is communication, uh, kind of like, hey, hey, hi, how are you? And song is either going to be I'm a male, if you're a male, go away. Uh, or I'm a male, if you're a female, please come along and say hi. Right, Keith. Um, another general one, I've got a very common one, a very noisy one, is our good old rooks. Um, the question is, do rooks sing? Ooh. And and a supplementary question, what is it? what do we think they are communicating when they're being so noisy between each other in their rooks? Uh, I know. I mean, I've done... I was outside your house, wasn't I, about a week it ago? It was indeed. It You'll was know that's uh, one of my nearest neighbours. Yeah. Um, basically, what I would say with um, with rooks is it's not actually song. It's just constant communication. You know, they just don't ever stop, do they? I mean, it's just all the time. Um, I mean, it's a good point. These are described as calls. Um, I'll, I'll put it on, actually, just to drive you mad, Barry, because you've probably been hearing it all day, haven't you? Thank you, Keith. There we go. Uh, so it actually does say song on here. How about that? Oh. Okay, so I know why that's called song. That's not really song, that's subsong, which is where birds just making odd noises. Um, this is what I would have called the song. But they just do it non-stop you know it's not individual calls it's just constant and you can't work out who's doing it you've got 20 rooks in a tree and they're all doing it so hard to know uh another more general question uh this one's about starlings yeah. um and the imitation of other birds um why do they imitate right well birds that do imitation uh, and there are many birds around the world that do it lyre birds for example in australia minor birds and so on in, in asia they um, learn other birds' songs and other sounds, and as they get older, the variety that they're able to remember and repeat is greater. So it's actually a helpful way for the female to detect whether the male actually is uh, old. Um, so a young bird might have, let's say, four or five different sounds it makes. A slightly older bird would have maybe ten. Uh, and if you're looking for a male that's going to be a successful male to breed with, then chances are the one that's a little bit older might be a bit more streetwise. So it's a way of indicating to the female that this is a, a, a bird with more experience. And um, for example, we found that nightingales, uh, they don't imitate other birds particularly, but what they do do is they build up their song as they get older. And the nightingale males that have the widest and greatest variety of sounds, the biggest repertoire, and basically they're the ones that um, 
that get attra attract all the, the females because they're just so obviously more experienced. I have to liken it to me when I was, uh, you know, young, a teenager, the guys who only had four or five jokes, never got a date, uh, but I had about 25 jokes and, well, you know, just, just leave it to you to imagine I had a busy diary. Shocking no. analogy, shocking analogy. It um, pretty bad, almost as bad as the jokes, actually. Yeah, anyway. borderline, Keith. Um, running out, well, getting closer, we've got about a few, four or five minutes left to go. Uh, there's three or four requests that we've not covered. Um, sparrows, actually. Um, obviously, you say sparrow very hawk? common. But you not say sparrows so or sparrow hawk? Sparrows. Sparrows, right. Okay, well, we've only got um, two sparrows that you could listen to, and sadly, Tree Sparrow has left Hampshire now, um, but I will pay them, play them both. So the house sparrows are lovely sound, very cheerful. Here it is. Um, they do several sounds, but here's the main one. So that actually is song because that's something that the male does and it's a very very loud and very kind of like you know look at me look at me type sound whereas the call is like this as they're kind of chattering away so um if you do go outside of hampshire maybe into wiltshire where for some reason tree sparrows are, are still doing okay the the song is much more instead of cheap cheap it's more sort of chip chop And if you could pick up on that so it's not cheap cheap it's chip chop right keith i'm bringing in close but there's i think there's two more and if there's time there was a request for repeat so let's just try two other uh, sure. ones uh the corn bunting and seti's warbler right well corn bunting is supposed to sound like a bunch of cheap bunch of keys jangling um it's a rather high-pitched sound might not come across too well on here but let's give it a go <laughs> you hear that all right or not? Could you redo it? Could you redo it? Do it again. Okay, so it's a bunch of keys jangling. Um, and and not a not a loud sound, although having said that, if you if you're younger you'll hear it better than if you're older for sure, because it's quite a high pitched sound. Um Chetty's warbler, well, yeah, this is an explosive sound, but it actually sounds as though it's saying Chetty, although it was named after an Italian called Chetty, but uh, here is the sounds of the song. Really explosive sound. And I think probably Keith, just coming up to the hour, um, there was a request if we could replay, the, and it probably ties into the earlier sound challenges, um, the black cap and the garden warbler. Could we finish yeah. on that? Was a repeat? No problem, because I think we did have a bit of trouble there, didn't we? Um, thankfully, this is not something we do too often. So hopefully uh, when we do do it again, we'll work out the best method. So here's the black cap. A reminder that the black cap sings right up the top of the scale. So it's the soprano, not the alto. Here we go. So that's the really sort of the, the, the top notes, whereas the garden warbler which very often will sing for a longer period without a break, is faster um, and actually stays lower down. So it doesn't do the high notes at all. It's, it's more, more alto. Okay, so that was the Keith, garden maybe can we just finish on one more and I think we'll then draw it to an end and that's that's the beautiful sound of the nightingale. Absolutely. Um, one of my favourites, of course. And sadly, not one we can hear so easily. One person I know did say, could we tell them where to hear nightingales? But I'm afraid we don't publicise those now uh, because they are so rare. But if you want to hear nightingales, go to France or something. They're still pretty common. Here's the song of the nightingale. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
beautiful sound. It's a real shame that we're losing it. There are one or two places. And the reason we don't publicize it, as I say, is, I mean, there are quite a lot of people who will go down, I'm afraid, disturb the birds in order to get photographs or to see them. And we, we just want to put the birds first, which I hope you understand. Um, brilliant. Thank you so much, Barry, for managing all of that and helping me get through those slides. Apologies to everyone that the sound wasn't quite up to what we would have liked. Um, but uh, we learned a few things and it was a practice run for our AGM, although thankfully we don't have any bird songs now. And if we were going to have bird songs, they'd be cancelling it right now, I think. Uh, so Barry, you and I might be, might stay on and just have a quick look at some of the chat and see what recommendations people have made before we, we close down. That might be a sure. good idea. Um, our AGM, incidentally, everyone, is on the 27th of March. Chris Packham will be coming to that, which is really great. He's going to be not only just chairing the AGM, he's going to give a short talk as well. A great event. We'll be publicising all of that. It's uh, obviously for our members, although if we have space, we'll let a few non-members in too. Thank you very much indeed for coming along. It's been fantastic having 200 or so of you here tonight. Thank you. Thanks all. Good night, everyone.